Hey guys, I got my Sally Jesse Raphael glasses on. <laughs> okay, let me spit out this gum because that's rude. Hold on one second. Okay, <laughs> now that we're about our business, I'm going to be doing a, another pattern review for you. As you can see from the title of this video, this is going to be the McCall's 7464 pattern. Um, what's going to be great about this is it is sized for petite people. That's me. Um, hmm. So it has four variations of the dress that you can do on here. It's basically a, a straight sheath dress, but it's got these little, uh, curved, uh, side insets going on here. Um, so we've got the short sleeve version, the half sleeve version, the sleeveless version, and the one-fourth sleeve version. That's the version that I'm going to be doing right there. Let me show you the line art that's on the back of here. Sorry guys, you know I don't have any good lighting in my apartment and I'm just not willing to spend the money on one of those professional lights because I could be spending that on fabric at Joann's or steaks. <laughs> um, anyway, sorry about that, the lighting guys. But anyway, um, so here is the line art. So here we got the sleeveless, short sleeve, short sleeve, and half sleeve. Hmm, I thought that was a shorter sleeve. I thought there was three variations of sleeves. But anyway, um, yeah. So this one here, um, is, that's kind of, that's kind of bland to me. I don't know that I would do that one. I'm going to be doing this view here that's got the pockets on the hips to give me a little shape, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I'm going to assume that this pattern is easy to do because it doesn't look like there's very many pieces for the view B that I'm going to be doing. There are one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven pieces that I'm counting just from my eye here. And it does not say that, okay, yes, these dresses are lined. That's great. Because <laughs> you know I was going to line it anyway. So as usual, I will be doing this in a size 16, which is for a bust 38, waist 30. I will be adjusting it for my hip though because I ain't got no size 16 hips. This is <laughs> it's 40 inches for the hip measurement. And your girl is like a 36 and a half. Actually, since I ain't been working out, it's probably like a 35. Because I'm telling you, I think my, my butt's getting flatter. If I got all my squats and my deadlifts and uh my pistol squats and my hip thrusts. I could get this together very easily. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to have to anyway because the convention is around the corner. Um, it's like five weeks until the first one. And I need to, I need to get my life together. Because um, some of the outfits I'm going to be wearing, my arms are going to be out. So I got to get my, my tricep cut. I mean, you can't see it in this shirt that I've got on right here. But anyway. Y'all know I like to go on and on about stuff that don't matter. <laughs> I haven't even shown you the fabric yet. I am sorry. Okay. View B with the pockets in the front. She looks super cute. I like her hair like that. I'm going to be doing it in a quilting cotton. This is from Joanne Fabrics, of course. It is a keepsake um, cotton, quilting cotton. And it's not necessarily an African print, but I think this could easily pass for an African print. Um, it's kind of got these uh, orange lines that are going vertically and horizontally on top of a yellow-orange background. But all these little things that you see here are gold. <laughs> it is gold, y'all. So I'm excited. I really wanted to do this outfit for this evening because I was somebody's assistant tonight. But duty calls at the salon and my clients wanted me to do their nails and stuff. So I didn't have time to sew a new outfit. 
but I was super cute tonight because I look like <laughs> one person told me I look like an administrative assistant and another person told me I look like a school principal. I will take both. Um, <laughs> I look like a professional either way. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sleepy and I need a meal. I literally do this to you guys all the time. If it's dark behind me, y'all, just assume that I'm tired. Just assume that. If it's bright, then just assume that I will do a better job at the first part of the video. So, this is the pattern, and this is the fabric, and my finished outfit is this. Alright guys, well this is my finished McCall 7464 sheath dress. Um, I must tell you that at first I did not like this dress. <laughs> um, the reason why I was not liking this dress is because it was taking so long to finish it. Um, I really started working on the construction of it yesterday at about 2 o'clock-ish I think after I watched the royal wedding and took another nap. So, <laughs> it took definitely at least 13 to 14 hours to complete, so I would not consider this to be an easy dress because I really didn't do anything special to it like I do my other garments. Um, the piping I made from scratch, so that is all, this is all a la Avanti. <laughs> um, and the bottom here is also, it's not piped at the bottom, it's actually just bias tape that it was leftover Kona cotton that I had from my living room drapes that I thought really popped with the orange. Um, so that was like really the most tedious thing about this whole dress. Uh, it has top stitching to it. Um, it has the piping. It has these curved insets on the side. As I was putting this dress together, I was just really like, I like these colors and I like the concept, but this dress is not speaking to me at all. It was not until I constructed the lining and dropped the lining on the inside that I was like, oh, I guess I do like this dress. It's going to be cute. And even if it's not, I'm still wearing it tomorrow or today. <laughs> so even though yesterday I did not like this dress, today I really, really like this dress. Um, there were only a few minor adjustments that I had to make. Um, I cut the top part of the dress in a size 16 and then from the waist down I tried to uh, resize it for a size 10. Now in that pattern, size 14 is the smallest size that that pattern goes to. So I actually had to like figure it out myself y'all and I was so worried that it was not going to turn out right and that I was going to mess up this awesome fabric it was just going to be a waste of time and a waste of money but it, it actually ended up turning out okay um the making the piping wasn't necessarily difficult because I made piping on many other projects myself instead of going to the store and buying it um the for me the most difficult part was the curved insets and on the instructions, it says to clip as you, you know, pin it and sew it so that you don't have to, it doesn't shift while you're actually attaching the piece, the, the bodice piece and the side piece together. And I didn't do that. I don't know why I didn't do that. I would do that in any other instance. I think I was really just ready for this dress to be done because I was excited about it last week when I initially said that I was going to wear it. And then I realized, hmm, this pattern has got a little bit more work to it than I think. So I'll just do it next weekend, this weekend. And I was just kind of over it yesterday. I didn't really want to do this dress anymore. 
there's actually another orange and blue dress that I have right over here that I'm not I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear that this coming Sunday or not but you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of orange and blue dresses together this summer and then just orange dresses red dresses yellow dresses floral and gingham dresses you guys are going to see a lot of that for me this year um because that's just the kind of mood i'm in so um but back to this dress um the curved insets uh shifted because on one i had to sew it uh with the machine going one way and on the other side the way it was pinned i had to shift it on this side going the other way which that is not something that you want to do you always want to sew in the same direction on both sides so that you don't get a strange bias shifting of your dress. Some of you will understand that, some of you won't. Beginner sewers will not understand that. I know, I'm so sorry. Can't explain it to you better. But when you sew in one direction on the dress this way and you sew in the other direction up, what will happen is your dress will start to pull like this and that is not what you want. It will make your dress look like it was homemade and you don't want that. Um, so I did have to clip a little bit off of the side more than I anticipated, which this dress is a little bit more fitted than I anticipated. Now the dress itself on the model is more of a loosely tailored shift dress or sheath dress. Um, that this style just does not look good on me. Some of you are going to say it looks fine. It looks great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you, girl. Um, but for me, I just, I really, really prefer a fit and flare type dress because it just works better on me. Now, your girl is retaining some water today. I'm a, I'm a little wee bit bloated. So this was not the greatest choice of dress for today. But again, like I said, I was over this dress and I did not really want to do it yesterday. But I was told myself, Avanti, you have all these projects cut out from this winter in the living room that you have not yet completed. I've got like seven projects over there just sitting waiting to be done. As a matter of fact, I actually completed a winter coat two years ago, but didn't put the buttons on it and haven't worn it yet. So <laughs> once I start a project, it's time to complete that project. So this is what you get. But today, this dress is not working with you, girl. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I, I actually do like the way that it turned out. Um, I had to adjust the sleeves quite a bit because they were really baggy. So I had to take off like an additional two inches from the sleeve uh, seam because it was going to be really, really baggy. And that is not what it shows on the model. I don't know whose biceps. Well, we won't get into that. We won't get into that because that's not nice. But anyway... <laughs> Um, this this fit, this this style of dress is not really my style. So this one will be going in the vault. Um, and I do not recommend this for beginner sewers. It is not an easy pattern to do. Uh, I would definitely say it's intermediate. Um, I would not say that for broad-shouldered, thick-waisted girls that this is a good idea. <laughs> I definitely think that this dress needs some hips and some smaller shoulders to work. Although it definitely will if you wanted to draw attention to your shoulders, this dress will do it. Um, but I really, really like the way that the piping looks on this dress. I think it's awesome. Orange and blue are the best colors that to pop together. I'm just saying. What color combinations do you like to do that you feel like the two colors just belong together all the time? Because I have quite a few dresses that are orange and blue together and they're some of my favorite dresses because the colors just jump out at you. I was going to be doing um, pockets on this dress. That's what I intended on doing. It was not supposed to be plain like this, which is actually what drew me to the pattern because I really didn't like the straight, almost shapeless, dress because I really do think that you need a little bit more body to make it work so what drew me to it is that it had pockets on there which was going to create some illusion of a shape in the hip area but with the pockets on the dress uh, like so it was going to take away from the piping and I just I could not see 
having done all the work on the piping and the top stitching, to put a pocket over one third of it and take away from the dress because you really can't see the detail on the pocket. My um, little pockets here are actually crazy quilted and I'm gonna do a close up for you so that you can see what, the, what I mean by crazy quilt. You will see this technique from me again in the very near future because I've been wanting to do a crazy quilt dress. Um, it just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to do a crazy quilt dress. But you will be seeing it from me soon. So I'm thinking that these two little pockets are eventually going to get made into some little makeup bag of some sort. I'm going to sew them together and put a zipper on it. And it'll just be like a, a makeup bag or maybe a jewelry bag for when I go on vacation. But either way, I didn't get to use the pockets because they took away from the dress. Um, I don't think I talked to you guys about the bias hem tape at the very end of my dress. It is made out of the same material as my piping. Um, so instead of actually piping the bottom here, I just took the same amount of tape that you would make for the piping and I just turned it to make a hem. So the hem is completely finished. It is not raw. The inside of the dress is fully lined, which is keeping me cool because this is 100% quilting cotton that you're seeing here. And it is hot in the summertime. It's 80 degrees and humid today. It was not humid earlier. It's humid now. I cannot wait to get out of this dress. I cannot wait to take off this wig and take off this makeup. <laughs> Because I tried a new make makeup technique and I'm not feeling it whatsoever. It looked really great on the YouTube guru who did it. It does not look great on this YouTube person. I'm not a guru. So, anyway. <laughs> Alright, I think that is pretty much it. Um, the only part of the dress that was supposed to be piped was the two insets. However, I did pipe the sleeves and I also piped the neckline as well. Um, they were both pretty easy. Um, why was I going to waste piping if I could put it on something else? Plus it also brings in more of the color of the blue to the dress as well. The belt is purchased and old as dirt. And you know I have on my favorite blue summer Jessica Simpson Coletti pumps from DSW. No, they're no longer available because I've had them for a couple years. You guys know you see these shoes often in the summertime. And in the winter for that matter. But anyway, um, this pattern is going in the vault. You will never see this pattern again. Um, no to beginners. Yes to intermediate. No to thick waist, broad shoulders. Yes to very thin girls. I think that would work. I think it would work on a thin girl. And don't, girl, don't, if you're bloated, don't do this dress. Just, just don't do it. But if you like to wear cute clothes, no matter what your body shape is, this dress might be for you, especially if you like piping and insets. Um, this dress is probably for you. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's it. I think the only other thing that I would like to say is I would love it if McCall's gave you more rooms for adjustment in the dresses. But not just McCall's, um, pattern makers the world over. Pretty much Berta is the only one that gives you the full range of sizes to choose from starting at a size 8 to like a size 22 in one packet. Um, because a lot of us are not built in proportion. Um, again, on patterns, I'm a size 10 down here and I'm a size 16 up here. And that is a lot of grading in order to make that work. Especially on a very tailored fitted outfit. If it was flip and flare, no problem. You just get a size 16 at the waist, you adjust it for the size 10. No big deal. But anyway, that is my review of the McCall's 7464. Oh, one other thing. Um, this here wig is by It's a Wig. Her name is Khalees. She is in chestnut brown. Uh, just in case you were wondering. I know some of y'all are just flat out wondering why are you wearing a wig when your hair is long. 
Okay, side note, has nothing to do with the patent review, okay? So if you are here for the patent review, you can go ahead and move on to the next video from here. But um, as far as the wig wearing that you guys have been seeing recently, um, this is me getting over my 16, seven inch, uh, 16 to 17 inch hump with my hair. Every year at this time of year, which is the springtime, my hair is 16 to 17 inches. Then during the summertime, what I do is I wear it out, I wear it in a puff, I wear it in the afro. Sometimes it's curly, sometimes it's kinky, sometimes it's wavy. Uh, it can be braid out, twist out. Or I might wear it in braids, I might wear it in a ponytail. And then at the end of the summertime, after my convention season is done in like late July, August, I end up cutting off four to six inches and then I'm back starting where I was and I've never been able to reach waist length. So I have decided to go um, revisit my wig life and wear wigs the whole summer to hopefully get me past that 16 to 17 inch hump. Um, because you know, I'm not hung up on length, I'm really not, but I've been stuck at this same junction for like five years and I've never been able to get past this and I realized it's because I do a lot of styling every day during the summertime and that always leads to breakage and damage and all that kind of stuff especially when you're manipulating fine curly hair seven days a week and then there's the dry sun and heat and you know, the wind whipping because you know I got a, I have a truck now and I have a, a sunroof and my hair be flying out the sunroof. <laughs> I do, I let that happen because, hey, let's face it, I didn't have hair like that before I went natural to let it whip out the window and stuff. But I would like to get over that hump to see if I can actually get to 20 inches of hair. Um, because it's always been my goal, like every December, hopefully I will get to waist length for me that is 20 inches. Um, and I've never been able to do it because I always end up cutting my hair in late summer. Not trimming it, cutting it, because it always looks terrible and horrible and bad. So that is what's going on with these wigs. Uh, so no hair update. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but um, this here wig is Khalees by It's a Wig. She is a hand-tied parting space. Uh, so it, it has lace in the middle, but you don't have to cut off the lace, which is great because I don't know why the company just can't cut it off for you. It's synthetic. Uh, it has a yakky texture to it, a very unnatural looking yakky texture. It's very shiny, very wiggy. Uh, <laughs> so if you like your wig to look super, super natural, this is not for you. Um, I was actually kind of disappointed when I initially took it out the, the pack and looked at it. I was like, what is this yappy mess? This is like yappy back in the day before they started making natural looking yappy. So it's kind of like a retro look to it, but I like this wig a lot because it is not super dense. To me, it's a very realistic um, density to it. So this is about 20 inches of hair. Um, and it is thin. You don't see the tracks. There was a, a review somewhere on one of the website, the hair wig websites, where a uh, consumer was complaining about being able to see the tracks, but I think she bought a blonde one. And It's a Wig is very bad at letting their tracks show on platinum blonde wigs. Sorry, that's, that's just the truth. But this one is a brown one. I don't have any problem with the tracks. I just had to make sure my hair was twisted down really good underneath of this wig to get it to lay flat. And this is flat, okay? Um, but you, it has no ear tabs, so you can actually shift it to the side if you wanna wear it on the left or on the right. Um, so you don't have to worry about it like sticking you or poking you in your ear or anything like that. And I didn't feel the need to tweeze it. It looked good to me. Um, I just put a little concealer on the part and it's very comfortable. I don't know nothing about the big head friendly stuff. I feel like it's a lot of hair friendly <laughs> because I do have a lot of hair, but I have it condensed down really, really good, you guys. Um, 
But yeah, I like it. It was um, from Wig Types for $23, I think. And this is the color that I chose because I wanted a, a brown, dark root brown wig. And they had two other colors that I wanted, which was a red into a deep burgundy and a black root into a copper. But this is the one I chose. And I'm pretty happy with my, with my decision. For $23, it's not, it's not bad at all. Even though it's got the really super shiny, weird, yakky texture to it, um, it, I like it for $23. I give it, I give five stars out of five, five out of five stars. Because for $23, what do you expect? And again, you don't have to cut the lace off. That's always great. Time saver when you're trying to run out the door like I was trying to do this morning. Okay, this review has been long enough. Thank you guys for staying tuned. And I will see you for your next, uh, my next soul project.